Currently, I'm saving up for a Pro Display XDR because, believe it or not, in the world of professional reference monitors for content creation and color grading, at 6000 euros, it's actually a bargain for what it offers. But I won't go down this rabbit hole today. In the meantime, I have to work with what I have. And what I have is a 14-inch MacBook Pro and the LG Ultrafine 5K. But for the longest time I didn't even utilize the dual monitor setup I already had. Mainly because it didn't provide any value. Before I had my desk arranged like this, my MacBook would be there on the left hand side and I would have to constantly look left to utilize the second monitor. The MacBook being further away and being the smaller monitor just didn't make sense for a dual monitor setup for me. One day I was color grading a project and I thought to myself, man, I wish I had more screen real estate. When thinking about a solution for this real estate problem, I realized that I didn't really need the timeline. So the timeline could be somewhere else. But with my MacBook there on the left hand side, it didn't make much sense. But then it clicked. I raised my main monitor up and put my MacBook dead center on the desk. With the monitors in place, let's have a look at the actual workspace layout. As you can see, if I go up here to Window, Workspaces, we're starting out with the default workspace. The first thing I'm gonna do is to push the timeline out to my second monitor. So I will click this down arrow here and choose time. As I do this, you can see that the timeline just appears on my second monitor down here. With the timeline down here, I get a huge effects browser, a huge transition browser, and also a huge index. And actually, this is a pretty huge win because I'm working with the index a lot. Back to the main monitor, the next thing I do is disable the media browser and I make my inspector as huge as possible. Something like this. Increasing the size of the inspector just gives me much room to work inside the curves, inside the hue saturation curves, and overall, I just can see better what I'm doing. Now it's time to configure the scopes. So I press Command and 7 and there are the scopes. The waveform is taking up a lot of real estate and I need more than the waveform. If I disable the scopes again by pressing Command and 7 you can see that there is a little bit of real estate down here and a little bit up here. What if we could make use of that instead? I just press Command 7 again, go to View and choose the vertical layout. Now it's down here. Obviously I need more than the waveform. So let's go into view again and choose these three columns. On the left hand side I want to have my waveform which is the Luma waveform. Okay this is great. In the middle I want to have my waveform as well with the RGB parade. This is correct as well. And here I want to have my vector scope. With the vector scope I make sure that the scale is at 100%. Vector is enabled and the skin tone indicator line is enabled. Overall, the scopes shouldn't be so huge, so I will decrease them in size a bit, like so, I guess. And now you can see we're wasting a little bit around the vector scope, so I will resize the vector scope until it's just right. And then I can divide the remaining space by two to make room for both waveforms. These three scopes are the tools I'm using most frequently and therefore having them right in the viewer at the bottom is pretty handy. When I'm working like this, I realize that I do have some wishes for the future. So for example, the timeline monitor in the future could be an ultra wide because I don't need that much real estate on the vertical axis, but I do need a little bit of real estate on the horizontal axis. But that's something for when I have the money and for another video.